Hey guys, Bowser Carrigan here, and today I'm joined by New Type. Hey guys. And Westtown HD. What's going on, guys? As we give our post E3 discussion. So, first off, what'd you guys think of this E3 in general? Uh, well, me personally, not really a Microsoft fan. I mean, they were, uh, Microsoft was kind of out there for me. I have no reason to buy an Xbox One X. Everything's coming to PC. If you're a PC gamer, you don't need an Xbox One X. <laughs> Sony. So it's looking pretty cool because, of course, all the games they announced are coming exclusively to the PlayStation 4. Well, mostly anyway. And Nintendo, Nintendo just completely blew me away. Partially because I'm a Nintendo fanboy, but also because their games look really good. <laughs> what about you, new type? Oh, well, I was kind of impressed on what they announced. A few surprises here, things we already knew was coming out. And honestly, there were some disappointments here and there, like Bethesda's. Um, they only really had, like, two new games everything else was kind of rehashed or dlc or v vr which i'm not really that interested in um nintendo kind of threw out a couple of new surprises there like mario rabbits i was not expecting it to be xcom style <laughs> that was definitely a surprise and yeah overall i'm pretty satisfied with what's coming out okay so let's start off with ea and i'm gonna be honest i did not see ea's press conference itself in my defense, I was working, but people that told me afterwards that sucked anyway, so... But just to give a quick rundown of everything EA announced, they announced Battlefront 2. We got the first look at Anthem, A Way Out, Need for Speed Payback, and like three different sports games. So, what did you guys think of EA showing this here? Well, I was there when I saw it, and for the most part, it was okay. They got through their sports games like, yeah, it's coming. Bam, 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 and then they showed Need for Speed, which was kind of interesting, but I honestly kind of wish I saw more of it, because the way they showed it, it was obviously, like, um, added together, and it was, like, not actual in-game footage, mm -hmm. you know, like they usually do in every conference. Um, a Way Out actually looks pretty cool as a co-op game, and I'm kind of stoked to see more from that. Um, and um, we didn't really see much from anthem at the ea conference but later on the microsoft conference we saw a lot more of it and that was pretty interesting can't wait to see more of that too and of course battlefront 2 which was the most hype thing they announced nice uh did you see ea's conference play can't remember uh i did not just because i i literally was ignorant and thought ea was only going to announce sports games and i wasn't a part of that but I did look up some of the uh, clips from before, and honestly, I'm, I'm easy to please. I saw the Need for Speed stuff. I know you guys say, like, that's not actual gameplay. But, I mean, I've I'm kind of been, like, wanting a good racing game for a while, and Need for Speed looks like it could be that. I'm hoping it could be that. And for what we saw of Anthem, Anthem, to me, literally looks like what Xenoblade Chronicles X should have been. <laughs> Online multiplayer with, with mechs and stuff. Yo, that could have been super cool. But, yeah, Anthem definitely looks like a day one purchase for me. Uh, and Star Anthem. Wars Battlefront, too. Anthem looks really good for me too. Looks like a cross between Mass Effect and maybe Destiny, I guess. And it looks really good. Definitely want to pick it up. Probably not a day one buy, but that's just because I usually only buy <coughs> games day one. If it's part of like an established franchise I love, or it looks really impressive. But yeah, looks yeah. solid. So like I said, most of us didn't care too much for E3s. So, I mean EA. So, uh, any final thoughts before we move on? Uh, yo, FIFA 18 on the Switch, though? Can't wait to take that outside and beat some kids' butts in, in soccer instead of actually playing soccer. <laughs> Why play sports outside when you can play sports inside? <laughs> okay, next up we have Bethesda. And they announced Dishonored 2 DLC, New Wolfenstein, a few other games like Fallout and Skyrim coming to VR, Creation Club, which I have a few thoughts about, and Evil Within 2. So... Uh, I know in new type you said you weren't too impressed with uh, Bethesda showing, but what about you? Like, uh, I mean, like I said, I'm really easy to please. Skyrim, I, I believe, did they show Sky did they show the uh, Zelda stuff for Skyrim in that direct? Yeah, they did. Yes. Yeah, okay. That I woke up because I didn't have time to watch the direct because I had to wake up early the next day. So I woke up and I saw the news and I was like, wow, this a the Nintendo actually did this. They actually put some of their IP in Skyrim, and I never thought that would that would happen, but. And VR stuff, I mean, I don't think the VR market is really doing too well as of right now. I mean, I think VR is a bit too overpriced for most people, and people just, there's just not a market for it right now. So, I mean, that's kind of hit and miss. Yeah, for me, it's both a price thing and the fact that I feel VR hasn't done what it's capable of yet. 
like there's some cool things in theory that you could do with VR that I just haven't seen yet. So it's not worth the price point. Hoping we get to that point, but as of right now, nah. Uh, for me though, I actually like Bethesda, but that's because I'm a fan of their games. So Dishonored 2's DLC and the new Wolfenstein were like very hype top 10 announcements of the C3 for me. So yeah. Also, oh. Evil Within 2 had a interesting trailer. Very interesting. <laughs> And uh, honestly, from Bethesda, the only thing I'm really hyped for is the new Wolfenstein. Mm -hmm. Everything else I'm kind of meh about since I never played Dishonored or Evil Within, so I can't say much about those. Uh, I haven't played Evil Within, it's just not my type of game, but first Dishonored is one of my favorite stealth games ever. It's actually what got me into the stealth genre, so a little biased. But I want to talk about their little creation club thing, which if you don't remember is is a program of theirs to let you put mods in your games at first i thought okay this is for people on consoles so whatever but they said this is also coming to pc so huh. i'm kind of worried that they're trying to replace free mods because this thing you have to actually pay for these so i'm curious if they're going to be replacing the workshops for their games on steam or what but it's a little worrying i find it funny how like certain companies like bethesda are like embracing mods They're like yeah yeah take our ips do what you want with them be creative and then rockstar just a few days ago has like made gta 5 mods illegal yeah rockstar has been weird with those i, I think, think it almost had to do with a hacking issue they were having with some mods for gta so in their case it's a little bit more understandable because i think um gta 5 you can't even uh go to the multiplayer section if you have mods like on even if it's not affecting multiplayer let's move on to ubisoft who announced Mario Rabbids, the big highlight, Beyond Good and Evil 2, the biggest shocker, uh, The Crew 2, Skull and Bones, Starlink Battle of Atlas, Far Cry 4, uh, 5 gameplay, Ubisoft, what'd you guys think? I, I, I was, this is like, I've never watched Ubisoft's directs before, but I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, uh, they, I believe we got more on Assassin's Creed Origins. And me, I've played one Assassin's Creed game, which was, I can't remember, I think it was Assassin's Creed 3. And I really enjoyed it. I never got to finish it because uh, my brother took his Xbox away. But <laughs> he, yeah, that game was actually really enjoyable for me. And just looking at Oranges, I know people are going to complain about it. People are going to find whatever they can to destroy it. But I mean, I it, personally, me, I, I don't find anything wrong with it. And then, of course, Mario Rabbids. We already knew this game. This game leaked like a good long time, at least a year ago. Yeah. And so we man. basically already knew this game was coming. And but the gameplay, I don't think anyone was expecting that. It's I really XCOM. <laughs> XCOM. Who, who literally thought? Who? Who? I really want to know. Like, what happened in the office that day? Hey, we, we have there's Rabbids and there's Mario and XCOM isn't doing too well. So let's take that gameplay and like. Put it in a Nintendo game with rabbits, huh? huh? And the creator of XCOM himself commented on it. He said, "I think his jaw hit the floor when he saw it." But he's, <laughs> I, remember, I saw. It really he's actually, the actually glad video. for it though, because he's always wanted to play. Well, have his daughters play XCOM, but it's a mature game, so this is a way for them to experience it while they're young. So that's pretty cool. He's okay with it. And uh, yeah, of course, Skull and Bones. I mean, I think there's there's been a lot of influx of pirate games this E3. Yeah, just compared to. Weird. A few, yeah, just compared to most E3s, but Skull and Bones looks looks really fun. I want to play it, can't lie. They pretty much and, just uh, took yeah. the naval battles out of Assassin's Creed 4 and made it into a game, which I'm fine with. Hey, add some online, make some co op. I mean, hey, you're good. And uh, yeah, the crew too, people complained about it. I thought it looked like Diddy Kong Racing HD, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. And pretty yeah, Far much. Cry 5 looks Far Cry 5 looks really well, it looks interesting. Well, more rabbits, that looks. Mario Rabbids actually looks really fun. Get a friend, you know, play some co-op games. Have a little goofy fun here and there. It's pretty good. Young, Good, and Evil 2. Extremely hyped for that, since I was not expecting it at all. Uh, Crew 2's, eh. I'll see more of it, and I might pick it up, since it seems like a fun racing game. Skull and Bones, just take the good part of Assassin's Creed 4 and put it in the game. Bam. There you go, moneymaker. <laughs> and Far Cry 5? Of course, you wants... Yes, Far Cry 5. <laughs> Shoot up no season, you know. And uh, cult is any day. <laughs> <laughs> For me, this was probably... Well, until Nintendo's, this was the best press conference of E3 for me. 
which a year in which Ubisoft wins E3 is like freaking unheard of. Usually they have like one good announcement and everything else is like just dance and other throwaway stuff. <laughs> yeah. But they really brought it this year. I gotta give it to them. Also, Starlink Battle of Atlas. If you guys don't remember what that is, it's that game where on your controller you have to put like the little toy of the like starship or whatever on your controller. It's like uh, Skylanders almost, where you need the toys okay. to play the game. Yeah, toys I remember that one. Yeah. In the design phases of this, who thought that this was a good idea? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, the gameplay itself looks fine, but the fact you have to put that big thing on your controller is a little alarming. That's all I'm saying. But other than that, Far Cry 5 looked really good. I'm a big Far Cry fan. The Crew 2, probably not something I would play, but it looks good. Beyond Good and Evil 2, like I said, is probably the most shocking announcement because they've had time to work on Beyond Good and Evil 2. They said, I think it was actually just rumors years before they were working on it, but we never got like concrete information. So to see that it's actually being made is really freaking cool. And of course, Mario Rabbits is Mario Rabbits. That's all I can describe it as. It's, it's its own thing. Yeah, they should put the rabbits in, in the new Smash Bros. game coming out sometime next year, and then just just add ra just add all the costumes. <laughs> well, let's move on to Microsoft. Of course, their biggest announcements was the Xbox One X. We had Forza Seven, Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, the announcement that Minecraft on the Xbox One would be getting crossplay across all consoles, minus the PlayStation, I believe. And Crackdown 3, original, ex uh, sorry, original Xbox backwards compatibility, and Dragon Ball Fighters. So, what was your guys' overall thoughts on Microsoft? Uh, they were alright. Um, for the Xbox One itself, uh, I wasn't really too impressed by it. It's basically just a stronger Xbox One S. Yeah, it's like, but by the way they were hyping it up, it's like, eh. But, but it's I the most powerful console. <laughs> but I will say the most impressive thing about it is that it does have backwards com compatibility, which was a probably the biggest selling point to it. Yeah, like if you bring Halo Two to the Xbox One, that that's instant sales. That game still has a cult following even among the Halo fan base. And uh, as for other games that they showed, like Forza Seven, honestly, for a recent game, it looked too slow for me. Mm. I don't know if that's like weird to say since I've never played any other Forza it games. It looks too realistic and I think they were trying to are with it. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, Minecraft, Minecraft 4K, just Minecraft, I guess. <laughs> I think cross-play, like with Microsoft and Nintendo, was a big thing. The reason PlayStation didn't want to do it was basically, they had like this whole draw long drawn out article of basically them trying to justify it, like trying to be nice and like, well, we make... Or when we when people buy a PlayStation, we don't want we don't want like our policies being violated, so on and so forth. But which basically translated to the PlayStation selling. We don't need cross play with these other consoles because we're we're substantial. We're not dying. We don't need their support, so we can afford to not have cross play. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm honestly surprised that Nintendo and Microsoft came together like that, which kind of makes me hope for a new Banjo Kazooie game on Switch, but I doubt it. <laughs> As I get into that uh, can of worms, I didn't. I didn't see a suggestion someone had that maybe like a like maybe like ten years down the line, like if Microsoft just drops at the console race altogether, they could come together with Nintendo because Nintendo's bad at managing online stuff. So Nintendo could kind of like merge their like the Switch or their consoles with like Xbox and let Xbox take care of the online services like an Xbox Live, but on Nintendo. It's crazy, but it, well, it could work. Crazier things have happened. Sega and Nintendo used to be kings of the console world. Look at it now. Never know. But I think the biggest takeaway from this one, uh, for a lot of people, besides the Xbox One X itself, was Dragon Ball Fighters. That yes. game won so many E3 awards. Oh, it's true, true. And the crazy thing is that it's only twenty percent done. It are well, I feel like they say twenty percent done just because like the actual like engine looks done, but now they just have to go add like three hundred characters. Honestly, uh, I'm. I'm pretty looking forward to like what the roster is going to be like. Yeah, me and especially, too. Especially since it is a, more of a traditional fighter and just like looking at the animation, it's like, oh, it's just so gorgeous. 
I am so excited just to see like uh, where tournaments take this and if it becomes like esports and then just watch how. Oh, you um, already it's know. Always, it's always, oh, this it's is always already going to become an esports. You already you always, know. <laughs> you already know, man. It's always fun just to watch top players like take characters to the next level and then do stuff that you didn't know that would happen. Like, oh, I didn't know I could combo this guy from zero percent to death easily. Oh, I'm gonna use this now. Yo, I just, I just love. <laughs> yeah, I'm just love your character. <laughs> I, I hope for at least stuff. 50 characters. I don't think that's too unreasonable considering it's freaking Dragon Ball. Plus, it's a three I mean, but three battle system. But, I mean, if this is just like an arcade fighter with lots of characters, I mean, I could see 50 characters, but if they had like a story mode, would that take away from the roster, I wonder? Because they'd need more space? Or, but this is 2017, so... Well, no, there's story modes and... It's a and Dragon Ball like... game, so they have the option of just going with the regular lore or making their own story. They can just make go it, the regular I wonder, if they'll, I wonder if they'll have like a create your own character section, kind of like how they've been doing that with Dragon Ball's universe recently. I kind of doubt for a game like this. Yeah, fighting it wouldn't... I don't think that'd fit too well. Most I would see is uh, customizable color, color palettes. I could I would could definitely enjoy that. Do we get word as to if this was a uh, Xbox exclusive? Uh, I believe it's confirmed to be coming to Xbox, PS4, and PC already. Okay, all right. I do you think do you think we can see a Switch release? I don't see why not. It doesn't look too uh, demanding. And then you could have like two Joy Cons, and then that could fit into everything. Yeah, that could work. It's up to the devs, of course. Um, let's see. For Microsoft, like I said. Xbox One X, not too impressed, honestly, despite their big hype of it. Even passing out shirts that said, I just saw the uh, most powerful console ever. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> not a fan of Forza. Assassin's Creed Origins, it looks good, but not sure if it's like a day one buy for me. But I do want to play because I'm a sucker for Ancient Egypt. Uh, Minecraft crossplay is cool, but I don't play Minecraft, so no personal thoughts on that. Crackdown 3, the best thing about that announcement was just Terry Crews going off in the intro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and of course, original compatibility with the original Xbox. That's pretty cool. And also, they're bringing back the original Xbox controller. Like, uh, Xbox One version of it. Which, I'm not sure how I feel about, because that controller is massive. I literally couldn't yeah, even I mean, hold it in my hands as a kid. It's pretty dated at this point. <laughs> But I guess if you want, like, just the novelty of it, it's cool. Imagine going from uh, the tiny Joy-Cons to uh, to an original Xbox controller. <laughs> uh, someone's gonna buy that for their kids, and it's not gonna end well. <laughs> but anyways, let's move on to Sony. So Sony had Uncharted Legacy, the first expansion for Horizon Zero Dawn, more footage of Days Gone, the announcement of Monster Hunter World, a remake of Shadow of the Colossus, uh, gameplay of the new Spider-Man game, new God of War gameplay, and a new trailer for Detroit Become Human. What'd you guys think of Sony overall? Sony, I definitely recognized a lot more in Sony's than I did Microsoft. Microsoft was kind of like there. It was just there for me. I was like, oh, okay, I got nothing else to do to watch this. But Sony, Sony, I was thoroughly impressed with. Horizon Zero Dawn expand that looks pretty good. I've seen a bit of Horizon Zero Dawn and it looks like something I can get into easily. Uncharted, I've been meaning to get into that series, also looks really good. Days Gone, very interesting. I mean I mean zombie game still. And, and yeah, Monster Hunter World. Oh Monster I think that was my most hype announcement out, out of all almost all of E3 this year. <laughs> definitely, definitely day one for me. And Shadow of the Colossus, I didn't think that was possible, but if they're remaking it, possibly we could see a sequel in the future. And that looks also really fun. Spider-Man looks kind of like Batman Arkham, or Batman, the one Batman game. What am I thinking of? Uh, the Arkham series itself. Arkham, yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks it looks really fun. It looks like the original Spider-Man 2 where you literally just open world, you just kind of spin around, knock people over, and whatnot. God of War looks interesting, and Detroit Become Human looks like the near future. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, the Uncharted series, eh, not really too stoked about it i mean it is uncharted it's just more of just an add-on to it horizon zero dawn never haven't played it yet but i am curious about it dane's gone it's another zombie game but honestly yeah, these the zombies in this one look pretty good so i might get it monster hunter world yes i'm really hyped for this one especially how great it looks shadow the colossus remake uh yeah i might pick that one up too i, I love the original colossus uh spider-man 
uh, we, this might be like the return of our Spider Game Man game since we haven't really had a great one since the PS2 one. Mm-hmm. And uh, God of War, my most hyped game of e- e- E3. I can't wait to fight all these Norse gods. <laughs> <laughs> And Detroit Become Human, eh, I need to see more of it. It's not like an instant buzz, since I'm kind of skeptical about it. Because of the whole, like, make your choice things. And if these choices actually do affect anything, instead of, like, the illusion of choice. Right, I know what you mean. Uh, for me, Uncharted Legacy, I'm still playing through Uncharted 1, so I can't really get hyped for this just yet. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, that was probably my trailer of like two E3s ago, one E3 ago, whenever it was first announced. I still need to play the actual game itself. Uh, Days Gone, all these zombie games I made just kind of blend together, but that one stood out a bit. I like the part where the dude blew up the the dam, and all those zombies just fled and killed the guys on the other side. Yeah, rest in peace to them. Uh, Monster Hunter World. I was actually a bit skeptical at first, because when the trailer, they was doing a bunch of weird stuff. And in fact, it's called Monster Hunter World and stuff. But Capcom has straight up said that this is Monster Hunter 5. They just decided to name it World, so it didn't seem, you know, scary to newcomers of the series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I feel is not a great decision, but whatever. Still Monster Hunter Day 1 by. Um, I couldn't get too much into the original Shadow of the Colossus, but it's a remake. It's cool. It looked really good. I know a lot of people are excited about that, so good for them. Spider-Man game looks amazing, but it's just not my type of game. Like, the Batman Arkham games, they're really good. My girlfriend's a big fan of them. Like, I can watch her play them. It's entertaining, but it's not a type of game that I can just actively enjoy playing. So, uh, God of War, that might be a day one buy for me. Looks really good. Uh, Detroit Become Human, it's definitely a day one buy, but like what New Type said, I am worried that... It's just gonna have the illusion of choice, but still want to pick it up. So Sony overall for me, it was good. A lot of good announcements spread out here and there. Any final thoughts on Sony for you guys before we get to probably the biggest one? Uh, there was. No, uh, I guess I was kind of, kind of hoping maybe we'd have a revival of Spyro and Banjo. Not ban- no, not Banjo Crash, but ah, uh, well, you can't complain. Can't complain well, this year's Sony E3. The Crash, I think the first three games are getting a remake, so just that. Yeah, yep. there's the Crash Collection or something. Alright. pretty great if you're a Crash fan. True. So, let's move on to probably the biggest one that we have to talk about. Nintendo. So, in the span of 25 minutes, and a couple Treehouse announcements, Nintendo announced Metroid Prime 4 uh, we got a new trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, new trailer for Fire Emblem Warriors, the announcement of a core Pokemon RPG coming to the Switch, uh, first look at Kirby on the Switch, the announcement that Rocket League is coming to the Switch, we got a trailer for Yoshi's new game on the Switch, uh, first look at the new Breath of the Wild DLC, a uh, really good look at Mario Odyssey, and at the Treehouse they announced that Samus, I mean, Metroid Samus Returns is getting made, which I believe is a remake of Metroid 2? Yes. Okay. So, what are you guys' thoughts on Nintendo? Overall, really impressive. <laughs> the biggest shock to me was Metroid Prime 4, since all it needed was a screen a screen title, and it says, in development, and I'm already sold to it. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo like already the, won. Sounds like the internet in general. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, Metroid Samus Returns, while I am looking forward to the game, I feel like there is a bit of controversy behind it. Because they did have that um, fan-made remake of Metroid 2, which oh, was yeah, later taken down that. by it. So I think my, some people might be a little stiff by that. But it's kind of understandable on Nintendo's part, since they were already planning to re-release it. Yeah, I can't blame them for that. It sucks, though. Uh, Xenoblade 2 looks great. Can't wait to get that game. Fire Emblem Warriors also looks great. Uh, Birth of the Wild DLC, still haven't played it, but it looks okay. Uh, Mario Odyssey also looks fantastic. That's also another one day day one buy for me. And not much else to say other than like Rocket League and Yoshi, Yoshi for the Switch. Oh, and Kirby too. How about you, Blake? 
Uh, this, I, I just, I just love how it took Nintendo 25 minutes to steal E3 from everyone's like hour-long <laughs> press conference. Nintendo's like, oh, oh, you guys do it in an hour, we'll do it in 25 minutes, and we'll still win. Uh, I, I loved every bit of it. I mean, I, of course, I'm greedy and I wanted more. I want them to announce more. Just 25 minutes wasn't long enough, in my opinion. But they still did really good. Metroid Prime 4, you know, you know, people have been asking for that. So just even just a title screen. That's all they needed. Now I'm hoping this game is good and they don't just do like what they did with uh, Tokyo Mirage or Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem, where they show us the title screen for that, and then they, like four years later we actually got the game. But it I think is, they, they announced Federation Forces too. <laughs> <laughs> I think they announced Metroid Prime was coming out next year, so that, that's not that's not too far away. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors is definitely my dream Warriors game. I've I started out in Hyrule Warriors and then I played Gundam Dynasty Warriors. So I played a few Warriors games and Fire Emblem Warriors. I've I've watched the footage endless amounts of times. I've broken it down. I've tried to scrape as much out of I as much as I can out of it, and it just looks like such a fun Warriors game. The maps are good. It's got it's fully in, fully voiced in English. The uh, the the enemies on screen are pretty good. As far as I can tell, it runs 1080 60 in the dock. But that could just be E3 footage, and then Kirby, Kirby on the Switch. I mean, I like it. Looks like the original Kirby, which which makes me really happy because Crystal Shards on the 64 is my all-time favorite Kirby game, outside of Kirby's Air Ride, of course. And Pokemon on the Switch, they they really didn't say anything. They were just like, it's happening. Quit complaining. Buy Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Have a nice day. <laughs> and yeah, Rocket League. Another thing. Another thing has crossplay with with the switch and xbox one so there's that and uh, yoshi looks really similar to yoshi's woolly world but like without the wool if you know what i mean yeah and yeah that game looks really fun me and my sister ran through yoshi world woolly world on the wii u and we had endless fun with that that game was really fun it was really cute it's just it's a nice game just to sit back and just relax with like without having to watch out for a boss trying to block you and destroy you in three hits like in persona 4 but anyway <laughs> And Breath of the Wild DLC looks really. Yeah, I mean, I, we don't know. We don't know enough about the Champions Ballad DLC, and I'm really hoping it's not just boring backstories on them because we we basically know enough about them. And Mario Odyssey, I don't, I, I don't know if I want this day one or not. I mean, I heard from people that at E3 that the OST is severely lacking, kind of like how in Breath of the Wild they just had ambient noises like birds and stuff, but. I mean, it's a Mario game. I I definitely think we could we could see a better OST in the final game, kind of like because 64 has some really good memorable memorable songs. Galaxy even Sunshine was my favorite Mario OST, and Metroid: Samus Returns. I mean, I don't know. The more I look at this game, the more I'm just like the 3DS is kind of on its way out. Like I don't. This is this seems like a game that should have come earlier rather than later. But I guess they want to get that final push. I'll probably you could probably see a new 2DS bundle with this game at some point. Just yeah. to kind of finally give it a push. And yeah. Okay, so my thoughts. Metroid Prime 4. I got like two hours into the first Metroid Prime and I plan to go back eventually. So this is a good announcement, but I can't get hyped, hyped for it. Not the biggest Metroid fan, I will admit. But I'm happy for everyone that went insane when they heard this news because I know the wait has been long for a new Metroid game. Xenoblade Chronicles hey. 2. The Xeno series is like rivaling Pokemon and Super Robot Wars for like my top three series spot. So this is a day one buy for me. I'm so excited. Every piece of news I hear about this game gets me more hyped for it. So I can't wait. Fire Emblem Warriors. This is a game I've wanted for literally years. Like if I were to think of a game I want to be done or a series I would want to be done in the Dynasty Warriors style. Fire Emblem was always one of the top choices, and the fact that it's actually happening, I am so excited for. Uh, new Pokemon RPG, a very hype announcement. Also, I believe it was today, or either today or yesterday as of us discussing this, the uh, director of the Pokemon company said that this is going to be a traditional Pokemon game, in the fact you will battle, train, and just encounter wild Pokemon like a normal Pokemon RPG. So that leads me to believe this is either going to be our Gen 4 remakes or Gen 8. Uh, Kirby on the Switch. I am sort of a casual Kirby fan, but I really enjoy the games. I say casual in the sense that I can't really play them for like hours on end, but I enjoy them. But it's uh, co-op, so this will be a fun game for me and my girlfriend to play together. So I'm looking forward to that. 
already on Rocket League on the PC, but I seriously might get it again on the Switch just for portability. Yoshi on the Switch looks good. Breath of the Wild DLC, I am like one of the only five people in the world that isn't the biggest Breath of the Wild fan, so I don't have much thoughts about that. Mario Odyssey, not a big platformer fan, but that game looks really, really fun. Definitely want to give it a try sometime. And Metroid Samus Returns, classic 2D Metroid, looks good. And also, I gotta say, Nintendo, I will never doubt you ever again. Because when it was announced that this was going to be just 25 minutes, I was so skeptical and worried. I was worried. ready for disappointment. And then they just blew everyone else out the water, and it was amazing. So, hats off to Nintendo. Yeah, hats off, you know, Mario Odyssey, I get you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was an unintentional pun, but i it nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> so, any last thoughts on Nintendo? Oh, uh, fantastic. <laughs> I forgot to mention how excited I am for Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and how I'm actually... I. They said this game has been in development since Chronicles X, right? Uh, 2014, they said. Yeah, I mean, I just... When they first announced it, Bao, myself, and among a, a wide variety of people, we all agreed that this game, there's no way this game is a 2017 release window. But they, sure enough, they they gave us a release date of December, or, Dece no, they didn't say December, did they? Did they say December? Well, we just know it's going to be a worldwide, a worldwide release, which is pretty massive in of itself. And uh, yeah, especially for like a JRPG like Xenoblade, which Xenoblade Chronicles X, I believe Japan got something stupid like eight months before us. Oh yeah, they did. And I, I was at the, like, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 just, it looks so good. And I love how it just take, goes back to the roots of the original Xenoblade. And the music reminds me so much more of the original Xenoblade. I mean, in Xenoblade Chronicles X, the music was good at times, but I could not be in new los angeles for too long without smashing my head against the wall because that theme was so horrible i just could not stand it at times i would mute my tv but this this game doesn't seem to have that problem this game's ost sounds fantastic i'm so stoked to play it could not agree more so any final thoughts on either nintendo and the other company or e3 2017 itself before we end but that's uh... that make new games <laughs> Stop releasing make, Skyrim. No one wants more Skyrim. Make Elder Scrolls Six. Uh, you know, Half Life, Half Life Three. No, no you're let's. Just, now you're just pushing. <laughs> so that was our E3 2017 discussion. I will give this E3 a big thumbs up. wasn't a bad one for sure. It wasn't the most amazing one, but definitely, I'd say, an unforgettable one. Definitely. So, thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for everyone watching. Hope to do this for years to come, pretty much. Make it more of a tradition. Watch E3. Discuss it. So, hopefully that's a thing from now on. But, I would love to hear everyone's thoughts on the E3 down in the comments section. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, too, for joining me for this discussion. And, everyone, have a great day.